Hi friends, welcome to Law Chat with Gerja. I'm Gerja Bhargav Patel, your host for Law Chat, and I am so excited for you to join us today. I have some amazing guests on Law Chat, and they're here to share their experiences and entrepreneurial journey with us, and through their storytelling, mentorship with us, because that is the whole point. We are all entrepreneurs and we're all on a journey and learning from one another is the best way for us to move forward in our journey as well. And I have amazing guests who are so willing and ready to share their stories with us, their challenges and their victories and their achievements and also their mindset. I just can't wait to share that with you. And I also just can't wait to have that conversation with them. It's such a privilege to have each and every one of them here with us today. And also it's such a privilege to have you listening in and tuning in. So let's dive in to Law Chat with Gerja. Hi friends, welcome to Law Chat with Gerja. I have such a special guest all the way from Indonesia with us today. She has achieved so much in life. She is a lawyer. She's a senior corporate executive turned high performance and business coach for women and women entrepreneurs. She's an author. She's a motivational speaker. And I literally, we were just chatting right before and she just gave so much positive energy to me as we were just talking right now. So I cannot wait to hear all the gems that are be coming out of her mouth today. But Mina Kumari Adnani, welcome to Law Chat. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I literally gave such a capsule summary of all your achievements. (laughs) But even in that capsule summary, we're able to see all the pivots that you have made. You know, just talking to you, I've also seen how strong you are as a human, but then also how much love you have to give to others as well. So I really Mm. want to touch on all of that today and see how as entrepreneurs, we can really hone into our ethos of who we are, but keep it consistent with our business as well. So welcome. I cannot wait to hear from you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I think it's amazing what you do and, uh, you know, showcasing different people, adding so much value to people who are listening to this and the lessons that they are going to learn. Thank you so much. I, you know, it's, it's so important for me because I feel like everyone's always talking about, oh, you need mentors, you need coaches, you need this. And sometimes they cost a lot of money or sometimes you just haven't developed that organic relationship with someone. And I feel like this is just a small way to give mentorship through storytelling. That's true. That's true. and, And so that's why I love when guests are on the show because everybody that has come and including you are just They've achieved so much. I want to hear from you also. How did you start? You know, how did you become a lawyer? What made you want to be a lawyer? And then how did that journey go from there to where you are today? You know, it's so interesting when people ask me that. I'm like, how do I answer this in a short version? Because my story is so long. (laughs) (laughs) Aren't they all? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know. I mean, in my case, first of all, having been brought up in in an Asian family, you know, I didn't come from a background where education was encouraged for women. For me, it was more like, oh, you're going to be married at the age of 20. Mm. And so as a 12 year old, I was like, no way in the world is that going to happen to me? Because I looked at the female role models around me, my mom and my aunts and everyone. And I was like, this is not what I want to be because I see that their lives were about serving their husbands and they didn't really have an independent life of their own and their happiness, their sadness, everything was intertwined with their husband. And I just didn't understand that. I thought if God creates human beings, we are all here for our own individual experiences. And yes, we're part of a community, we're part of this world, but we we came here for our own purpose. And Mm -hmm. it can't just be intertwined with another person so much so that you don't have a a living yourself and you don't have your own desires, your own goals. And so that was what made me very determined that I'm not going to be that. And so I want to be someone else. And I remember watching a Bollywood movie when I was accompanying my mom and my aunts. I saw this girl in the movie. She was a lawyer and she was so confident. And I was like, I am going to be her. I didn't know. Which movie was this? I can't even remember. I was like, I saw her. I was like, I'm going to be her, you know? And I didn't even know anything about the legal profession. I didn't know. I just thought she exudes so much confidence. And I, in fact, wrote for a book uh, called um, Ignite Your Life for Conscious Leaders. And I wrote this part of the story about how I just looked at her and said, wow, she looks like a Greek goddess in charge of her life. 
and I want to be that woman in charge of her <laughs> life. And so yeah, my journey that. began there where I just went against every grain that, you know, I was taught about how a woman should be, what she should be doing and how I should be. And every year of my life, I had to really negotiate with my dad to let me go back to law school, to let mm-hmm. me go do my O-levels, A-levels, because I lived in Indonesia. I insisted on being sent to the UK. So I qualified as a solicitor in the UK. And then I qualified as an attorney in New York because I thought, hey, it's not enough. If I've been qualified as a solicitor, I'm the sucker for punishment. So let me just go into the New York bar. (laughs) So did you take the New York bar also then? You must have. Yes. Yes. So I qualified in the UK and in New York. And throughout the time, it's interesting. The fear always was don't be too intelligent. Don't be too educated because Mm. then you won't find a husband. And I'm like, is that supposed to be the benchmark, you know, for where I need to be in life? So um, clearly I didn't, to me, that wasn't important. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting because your mindset journey started at a very young age. Yes. Um, yeah. Because your like how you're explaining your family environment and everything was not necessarily maybe encouraging to, for you to like, you know, pursue your dreams. So how did you overcome that? How did, it's really tough to overcome when your parents are the ones that are standing in your way. Yeah. So how did yeah. you overcome that? And how did they embrace it? It's interesting because I think back and I realized that I didn't focus on any obstacles. All I focused mm. was on my goal. And so mm. I learned a lot by looking at my younger self. And I just look at what was it that got me to where I got to. And I'll tell you why it became important for me to look back at that. In 2016, I found out that, well, I had trusted someone in my family with my finances. And one dreaded Sunday, I got a call to say, please come over. And I went over um, my family member's home to be told that he had lost 100% of my money. 100%. Yeah. And I was actually very close to hitting my seven figures. And that was my goal. Oh my goodness. And so when I got to that stage, I literally hit rock bottom. I mean, I went through depression, as you could imagine. And every single day, all I could see was myself opening the drawer, taking the knife and slashing my wrist. Every day I saw that in my head. And that's all I wanted to do because until I lost that money, I didn't understand what money represented for me. It represented freedom. It represented my ransom for putting up with all the bullshit that I did in my life. It represented, (laughs) you know, independence, security, everything. It was my identity and I lost everything. And I thought, how in the world am I going Mm -hmm. to get over this? Right. And Mm -hmm. so every single day I had to really think about survival strategies And this is what I taught myself, you know, every day when I would wake up in the morning, I'd open my eyes and I would say, I think that was a bad dream. I'd wake up and then you just feel a pang of sadness and you're like, it wasn't a dream. And then you're like, I don't, you want to get out of bed. Right. And so every day I taught myself, just put your feet on the floor. Don't overthink. Okay. Now take the next step. Don't overthink. And every day, every day, I'd just sit in front of the mirror. I'd look at the mirror and I'd be like, All you got to do is show up today and you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Just show up. Mm -hmm. And on days I didn't want to go to the gym, I'd force myself to go to the gym. And there were times I would just be carrying the weights and I'd just fall on the floor crying, but I would just still push through. Mm -hmm. And every day it was that. And, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about mindset because, you know, when we say I am this kind of a person or I'm that kind of a person, all you are is a series of repeated behavior or habits. And so I had repeated how to survive. So as depressed as I was, I had repeated survival. So of course I'm one notch higher. And then I asked myself, what am I grateful for? Because that's the only thing that helped me get through. And every day I started talking about the things I was grateful for. I started thinking about the things I was grateful for. And you know what? At that point, I didn't know anything about gratitude. I didn't know anything Mm. about universal laws. I didn't know anything. It was just, I really, I really believe the universe is universal, Mm. right? So you get, you get your own like intuition, you get your own download. And so I just was grateful. And then when I got to a point where I was slightly okay, I asked myself, 
what do I have that no one can take away from me? And the voice in me said, what got you here will get you to your next level. You need to trust that. And I asked myself, what was it? It was my resilience. I knew that if I was resilient enough, I could rebuild myself. Mm -hmm. And so in that two years, I really learned a lot in terms of spiritual growth. I developed myself. I focused on my vision. I realized that I'm not going to be that person who's going to sit here and talk about how that one experience destroyed me. I'm going to talk about how this one experience built me. Mm -hmm. And so in 2016, I lost my finances. And in about less than a year, in 2017, I created a vision that I wanted to buy a villa in Bali. That was my vision. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the finances at that time, but Mm -hmm. it didn't stop me. It didn't stop me. I just took a picture of like, um, it wasn't even a picture of a villa. I took a picture of like a beach and like trees and sunset. And that represented Bali for me. And I put it in my note on my phone, you know, put it on my note. And I'm like, I'm going to own this villa. One day I'm going to own a villa in Bali. And by 2018, I had rebuilt myself and I bought myself the villa in Bali. Oh, incredible. I got chills just listening to you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And so, you know, that's why it's so important. This Mm, is so important. Mindset is so everything. So important. And the power of gratitude is, I think, sometimes so underestimated. So underestimated. But that was more recently than not. But were you at that time in 2016, were you still practicing law? Or had you made shifts in your business and profession? Yeah. So I started out as a lawyer and then I worked as a lawyer and then I went in-house. I worked at Viacom as an in-house lawyer and I was doing business by then because uh, the legal department was known as business and legal affairs and I was doing business deals Mm -hmm. and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. And I realized that I was, I knew more about business than my counterparts who were responsible Mm -hmm. for the business. And then I thought, this can't be that tough. You know, I should be doing business because I really enjoy it. (laughs) And so over the years, I ended up taking on business portfolios. So I pivoted. I pivoted and started taking Mm -hmm. on business development, sales, marketing. And my last role, I was chief marketing officer of a public listed company at a board level, which is very rare for women and women with our ethnic background as well, you know? So I had pivoted quite a bit in my life. And then... After that, I pivoted to now uh, mentor women and women-led businesses. So I mm-hmm. focus on making sure that they perform at an optimum level, so high performance as well as business. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. So what a powerful story. You, so you've taken all your experience working in these corporations and the, the levels that you held in those uh, companies, and now you've started your own business, right? Yes, I have. I hate to interrupt this awesome conversation, but I have to stop and talk with you about the number one thing I'm asked about by entrepreneurs, contracts. They're vital to any business relationship and to protect your business. But I also know that entrepreneurs, especially when you're starting up, money is tight, but I would never want you to compromise on a strong legal foundation. So enter your contractbuddy.com, a website created by me with contract templates created and drafted by me and fellow industry partners. They're ready to use and easy to plug in immediately. And they are not restricted to any specific state. So yourcontractbuddy.com is sponsoring this episode and you and your listener can get 10% off right now with code LAWCHAT. Yes, you heard me right. 10% off right now with code LAWCHAT. And now back to our awesome conversation. And so when did you start that business? Now, was that? Uh, Quite a few years ago. Quite a few years ago. Was that before 2016 or after? Uh, It was after, after 2016. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, you know, as I started to change as a person, I started like to have a different mindset. I just started attracting more opportunities than Mm -hmm. I had, than I had ever imagined. Mm -hmm. Um, I had women who owned businesses who asked me to mentor their business. And at first, I wasn't really aware that they were all women. I knew they were business owners. And then I had this moment of epiphany, like, oh, my God, (laughs) they're all women, you know. And then I realized that, wow, maybe there's this beautiful story in the Bible. Um, 
Uh, I don't know the details of the story and I'm just using that as a reference because I really like this one sentence. Um, I think Esther, Esther, I think. I can't even remember her name, right? Esther. Anyway, but anyway. She is a Bible yeah, she, character, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, she was married to one of the kings and um, his, the king's people were actually killing uh, people from her tribe. And so her uncle, Mordecai, told her that you need to go to the king and tell the king this is what's happening. Because if you don't, we, everybody from our tribe is going to be gone. And she said, I can't do that. I cannot do that because as one of the wives, I'm not allowed to actually approach him until he calls me. And so Mordecai said to her, do you not realize why you are actually in the palace? Maybe you were put there for such a time as this. Mm. And so when I had all these women approaching me and asking me to mentor them, I suddenly had this like, wow, maybe I lost all that money and rebuilt myself for a time as this. Mm -hmm. Because I know that it's not easy when, I mean, I didn't have all the support I needed growing up. I was resilient. I got to where I got to, but I can't say the same for other women, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone needs support in their journey. And People, especially women, you need to tell them how much you believe in them, how much you believe in their ideas, how much you believe in what they're about to create. Because when you actually put that faith in a person or you actually teach people to have faith in themselves, magic happens, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that was one of the main reasons why I ended up doing this full time. Mm. So powerful. I, I mean, I'm just listening to you and I just want to keep listening to everything that's coming out of you because I personally believe also that whatever experiences we have, positive, negative, traumatic, semi-traumatic, they're all meant for a reason. They're coming into our lives to build Absolutely. us the next season. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes it's tough. It's tough to even acknowledge that. It's tough to even say, okay, and be reconciled with that because sometimes the trauma yeah. is so huge. The pain is so huge. Yeah that you're just kind of like, how can this happen? But if you have a, you know, your faith, your anchor, which I'm going to ask you in just a second, what is your anchor? My anchor is God. I always turn to God and gratitude. And that truly lifts me out of whatever, you know, negativity I might be in at the time. But I think it has so much power. And yeah, and it's okay to grieve, like how we were talking before, still pursue and move forward. Yeah. And so share with me though, what is your anchor? Because you have, you know, you went through so much financial trauma in 2016, which also emotionally impacted you. What was your anchor besides the resilience that you have and your inner strength? But what is, what gave you that inner strength? What is it that you turn Mm. to when that happens? Mm. Wow. This is such a nice question. I mean, not nice, but such a deep question. Deep question. I think I have many anchors, but it all probably leads to the same thing. And I believe that it's the same thing, like what you say, God. I believe that we're all made of the same fabric. We're all made of the same uh, elements as the universe is. And so not only are we able to tap into the power of the universe on the outside, but the universe already exists on the inside. Mm. And so I think the mistake a lot of people make is they want to try and get power on the outside, but they don't realize they already have the power on the inside. Mm. And so learning how to tap into that. But what really drives me, really drives me is first and foremost, knowing that there is a purpose behind everything. You know, even we are created with a purpose for a purpose and on purpose. We're not just some random accident, you know? No. And so we're created with a purpose. And so if we are created with a purpose, I'm very clear of the fact that I'm a spiritual being having a physical experience. Mm-hmm. And so instead of being too focused on my physical experiences, I ask myself, what is a lesson that my spirit needed to learn? you know, in this, through this journey, what lesson am I supposed to learn? And then learn that lesson. Because when I I think what causes us pain is not something that happened, but the resistance to what happened. Oh, can we say that one more time? That was beautiful. What causes us pain is not what happened, but the resistance Mm. to what happened. You know, this unwillingness to accept you know, like we were talking about my dad's um, passing, right? 
I had to really sit with that. I had to really sit with that and ask myself, what is it that makes me feel so hollow? What is it that makes me feel sad? Not because he passed. And it's not because he passed because I know we're spiritual beings. In my head, I know it. And I know it's a temporary physical experience. So why am I feeling the grief? It's because our body, our mind is not willing to accept that he's gone, that mm -hmm. I won't see him. You know, it's this, mm -hmm. it's so interesting. Life, we all know no one gets out of here alive and yet we can't accept it, right. you know? And so, and it's so, my anchor basically is just knowing that there's a reason behind everything. There is a power behind everything and just trust, 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 trust the process. Make the most out of what you can and continue to build, continue to evolve and continue to impact because mm -hmm. if we are supposed to be here only for our own selfish reasons, then we wouldn't be in a world, you know, where we are with people from different religion, different tribe, different race, different religion, different gender. We're not here to judge each other because we're, we're all part of one consciousness anyway. We're supposed to be supporting and co-elevating, which I think is what is the problem with the world. It's like me against you, you know? Mm -hmm. We're all on the same side. What are we fighting? I don't understand half of the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Especially on social media and um, people taking sides when they don't even have the full information. They're, yeah. You know, and, and it's just, it's sad. And I know that before also we were talking about how it's so important to be very intentional about what you're ingesting into your life. And also yeah. what you are speaking out as well, like how you are living and how you are impacting others. And so, you know, you've just talked so much about how to find your resilience, how to also, I love how you said, reflect on your younger self to see how they've pushed forward. Or, mm. And, you know, maybe your younger self was, for anybody listening, maybe their younger self was not necessarily the mature younger self or the driven younger self. But even then, to focus on the time and the season in your life when you were driven or the season that yeah. you loved yeah. and to see what was part of that that made you keep going. Yeah. And I love these tricks. I, I call them tricks, but they're not really tricks. These are... I, I, call, them, I, call, I call them hacking habits. I, yeah, I, 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 I like love it. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah. you know, I like what you said about, okay, you know, when your younger self is not resilient, actually, that's not even true. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people say things like, oh, I'm not very confident. And I say, really? And they say, yeah, I'm not confident. And then I ask them, were you born knowing how to walk? Of course not, right? You're born and then after a while you learn to crawl, then you learn to walk, then you learn to run, right? You're, were you mm -hmm. born knowing how to walk? No. Okay, so when you tried walking the first time, did you fall? Yes. Did you cry and say, walking is not for me, I'm not confident? You didn't. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, this sucks. You cry, cry, cry. You get up again and then, and then you, you do it again and again and again and again until you know how to walk, right? Yeah. And so as kids, we don't take like failure personally, you know, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. we grow up in an environment in a world where it's really, there's such a bad thing attached to failure. And that's when we start taking that on. But otherwise we're mm -hmm. all very resilient human beings. So true. Taking failure personally is what stops yeah. us from moving forward sometimes. Yeah, that's so true. I completely agree with you. And I also think there's a lot of bliss and ignorance sometimes. That's <laughs> what <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the universe as you were talking and just tell me, tell me what are some tips or some ways that you teach your mentees on how to hone into that or how to hone into mm -hmm. the vision that you have and what does that journey look like? How do you do it? Sure. So I run a program called the Empowered Woman Academy and it's a six week program. And in this program, I cover three things. So I call it my three pillars. One is confidence. Second is clarity. Third is conscious creation. So confidence as in learning how to create a new identity, because obviously the identity we have, the thing that we attach to identity is not going to allow us to be confident. So you have to learn how to create a new identity to become confident. Second is learning how to have a clear vision. Now, a lot of 
I wouldn't say a lot. I would say maybe 99.9% of the people in the world, which is more than a lot, um, are very, if you look at life, right? You look at past, present, future. What's happening is we are in this present moment. We are never, ever present because mm -hmm. all we are doing is regretting the past, nostalgic about the past, worried about the future. And then you move forward. This is the future you were worried about and you will still regret the past and you will still be nostalgic about the past and you worry about the future. So if you think about it, at every stage of your life, you're not aware of the fact that this is the future you were waiting for, this. Mm -hmm. And you continue to just like keep focusing on regret, focusing on fear, focusing on regret. But what you don't realize, this is where you, this is the moment you have been waiting for. And so for me, when it comes to the universe and the laws of the universe, there are a lot of things that I teach, but one is learning how to become a conscious creator because the universe, like Gabriel Bernstein says, the universe has your back, you know? And so everything that happens is not happening against you, it's happening for you. So rather than sitting back and thinking I'm the victim of a circumstance, like how I lost my money, it's like I'm a victim of a circumstance, how do you use that? and pivot and become a conscious creator mm. because at the end of the day you have a choice you always have a choice you want to live by default or you want to design your life and so i choose the latter mm -hmm. you know so much so that sometimes i get into trouble and when i say trouble i mean like you know when i in my career whenever i applied for jobs i would have heads of hr looking at my cv and getting confused because i have a legal background I qualified in UK and New York, and then I took over business development, and then I'm a chief marketing officer. Then I headed content for uh, the largest uh, cable public company in Indonesia. They're like, oh my God, what is it that you do? You don't have an expertise. And then I look at mm -hmm. them and I'm like, mm, I don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, you, you started in law. You should, you should just continue with law. And I'm like, says who? It's mm. a very narrow mindset. The world has such a narrow mindset that you're here, you should stay here. And I'm like, why do we spend our whole lives fitting in when we actually created to stand out? Mm -hmm. You know, so for mm. me, it's more like, no, you put me in any division, I'll be, I'll, I'll thrive. I'll show you I'll thrive because right. there's very little I can't do only because I'm resilient and I can learn. That's it, you know? And so, yeah, that cultivating that mindset, knowing that the universe is not working against you, it's working for you. And at every juncture, when you go through hardship, rather than asking yourself, why did this happen to me? What I ask myself is, what am I to learn from this? Mm -hmm. Because when I learned that lesson, my spirit gets to the next level, you right. know, of evolution, evolution, evolution. So, yeah. Oh, that is so true. I think, oh gosh, I, I love that because it's so true. Every time you overcome and you move forward, you are also gaining spirituality. You're gaining yes. a clearer vision. And I feel like as humans, we've tapped, very few of us have even tapped into something beyond what our brains can handle, right? Our Absolutely. brains can handle so much. Yeah. And, but we don't tap into that. We're so scared to tap into it. And we're always on the yeah. superficial threshold and we never yeah. dive into it. And you're right though. The more I, you know, I personally feel that whenever I do have challenges or if there's a fear of mine, I head on face it just because I feel like that's the only way I'm going to overcome something in my life. Yes. I can't overcome it if I'm running from something. Yeah. Cause then I'm never, I'm never paving the way I'm running away. Yeah. And so I love that, that each time you move forward and you're, you know, more resilient, you're gaining more spirituality. Yeah. That is so brilliant. I just, there's just so much. And I love talking to you. I'm loving this. Likewise, likewise. I'm just loving, I didn't, I, I didn't expect this conversation to go in this manner. And I'm just <laughs> so happy that you are on this episode and talking to us about it, because I think a lot of times, especially right now with Corona and COVID and life, you know, last week, I'm recording this on February 23rd, 2021. Last week in Houston, we had, or in Texas, literally we had this huge blackout for a week, one whole week, most like millions of Texans crazy. did not have power, did not have water. And it was beyond, beyond understanding. Crazy. 
Yeah. And, you know, it's been a tough time. You know, then I'm like thinking, okay, there's other parts of this world that don't even have that the way we do, right? Like I'm yeah. so privileged from, again, where I come from. But at the same time, it's a lot for me personally yeah. and my neighbors yeah. personally, right? And what would you say to that person today who is going through all this Corona stuff, right? Mentally, they're just exhausted. Mm-hmm. Emotionally, mm-hmm. they might be exhausted also. And there's fatigue. There's lots of fatigue mm-hmm. right now. And they might have faced losses. I know you faced a huge loss because of COVID. And I'm just so sorry about that. Thank and you. What would be your words of wisdom to them to help them move forward, especially during this mm. season? Thank you for that question, because I think that's so important. The f- most important thing I would say is now more than ever, you need to wake up to the fact that your well-being is your responsibility more than ever, not just health, but mental well-being. Mm -hmm. So do what it takes to fill your cup Mm -hmm. and don't leave it to your husband to make you feel better, for your kids to appreciate you, for somebody else to make your day. No, you empower yourself to make you feel good. And so how do you do that? The greatest advice I will give you is making sure every morning you really have a ritual where you are feeding yourself, whether it is affirmations, whether it is, you know, gratitude, whether it is journaling, whether it is meditation or all of it, you know, I actually have, I created a video, which is on YouTube and I call it my five happiness hacks. Mm -hmm. And in that video, I talk about how we actually have the state of the art kitchen inside of us, right? Right. We don't learn how to use the -the state-of-the-art kitchen, but we want to farm out the responsibility of our food to other people. And because we don't know how to do it, and other people probably don't have that level of responsibility to take care of us. So what we do is we end up getting takeout, you know, and we eat junk food. And so this is what we do with our mental well-being. We don't do what it takes to be grounded, to be centered, to make sure that we are okay. We are constantly relying on external factors to give us that hit of dopamine and so that we can feel Mm -hmm. better, right? Mm -hmm. So like whether Mm -hmm. it is like eating chocolate or whether it is Mm -hmm. social media or whether it is like, you know, someone complimenting you or retail therapy, whatever. But the truth is you can actually do it yourself and it's Mm -hmm. much more sustainable, much more powerful. Mm -hmm. And so I really am a big fan and big believer of really making sure every day in the morning you practice Mm -hmm. that because if you wait till the night, you would have spent the whole day spinning off the wheels, you know, Mm -hmm. so do it in the morning so that during the day you are already replenished and you don't get easily triggered and you're already Mm -hmm. happy. And the second thing I would say is if people are going through a difficult period because their family has COVID or whatever it is, as hard as it is, Every single day, force yourself to say three things that you are grateful for. Yeah. So when my family went through COVID and everybody was hospitalized, I was at home with my nephew, my 14-year-old nephew, and him and I were the only ones who didn't have COVID. And so we would sit on the balcony and every day I would tell him, tell me five things you're grateful for. And you know, for kids, it's so easy, right? (laughs) So, so, so he would tell me five things he was grateful for. And then I'd say, tell me five more things he's grateful for. And he, from the top, you know, from yeah. nowhere, he's able to like, tell me. And I, I, and I would do the same. And that really kept us going every single day. So yeah, those are two things I would really highly, highly recommend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I completely subscribe to that as well. My mornings, if I, and I know some people say, you know, do it when you can do it, which is fine. Like everyone's schedule might be a little different, but I prefer mornings also because I want to yeah. set myself up for success. I want yeah. to set my mindset up for success and position myself in a place where I'm not going to get derailed. And yeah. how I do that is the same thing. I journal, I meditate and my journaling is like gratitude. And like, I call them, you know, like I'm talking to God at the time, like I'm just having a conversation yes. with God at the time. So it's yeah. a mix of a lot of different things. And then affirmations also, I think are so important. And it's been life changing. It's been really life changing. And when I don't do it, I feel very off balance yes. that day. Yeah. 
Yeah. And there are days I don't do it because I just don't have the time or, yeah. you know, today also was a pretty rushed morning, but I literally got my journal out right before I got on this call with you. And I'm like, I need to write something. I just need to, even if it's <laughs> two sentences, yeah. but I think it has, it really helps, especially gratitude. There's so much power in gratitude. And yes. I think when you start looking at the gratitude and the beauty that you have in your life and the blessings that you have in your life, your shift in focus also changes. Your perspective Absolutely. changes, right? Absolutely. And it yeah. becomes a lifestyle. It's not something you're yeah. doing in the season, but it needs to become a lifestyle. Yes. And so when you do go out to eat, you know, or have that fast food, you're not feeling terrible because you know, overall you're consistent. Yes. I think people don't understand why gratitude is powerful and mm -hmm. there is a reason behind why. You know, Tony Robbins talks about like, you know, he says that if you want to buy a, like a red Jeep and suddenly you will see red Jeeps everywhere in the street. Likewise, if you focus on gratitude, then all you will see are things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And because we are a magnet, like attracts like, whatever we are grateful for, the universe will give us more things to be grateful for. So that's why we set off a whole chain reaction to being grateful. And I think this is something people need to know why it's important. And even if you don't have time, I think something that is really easy to do is when you wake up, everyone has like two minutes, you know, when you wake up, just don't go anywhere first, just sit in bed and just take deep breaths, just deep mm. breaths, just even if it's 10, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then if you're rushing to brush your teeth or whatever, what you do is you have affirmations playing in the background. Mm -hmm. You see, like it's easy because it still really makes a difference because your subconscious yeah. mind is able to like hear taking this on the in. loop. Yeah, yeah taking yeah. it in, you know? Yeah. 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 What a great, that's a great hack. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, I like to live a life of gratitude. Mm. I think um, there's so many things to be, you know, just even when you don't have the smallest things in life that you take for granted, like power and water, and then you realize, wow, what yes. a blessing it is to be able to shower. Exactly. Or to drink a good, clean glass of water. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, those things make life. Yes. So I completely, I love gratitude. I think it's such a good habit of practicing it all the time throughout the day. You're, you know, you don't have to do it in the, if you do have that, I love the breathing exercises in the morning, even if it's just a like five breaths in and out, it makes such a difference. Listening and to affirmations while you're brushing your teeth, you know, yes, it's so easy. It's yeah. so easy. And Oh, what I was going to ask you is, do you suggest any links or YouTube videos or something that are great spots to get affirmations or great spots for meditation? Mm, meditation, I really am a big fan of Joe Dispenza. Okay. So I usually meditate to his videos. And also, if you want affirmations, I love Abraham Hicks. because She has okay. fantastic, fantastic affirmations. She has all these different rampages. So yeah, I love them. But then there are so many online anyway. Yeah, true. But sometimes um, it's nice to know what yes, others are doing yes. also because yes, great. Yes. I'm going to put all of those links down in the show notes as well. Now tell us, I know that you right now have a mentorship program and you also are a coach. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you and connect with you, how do they do that? They can contact me through my website. My website is strongandshine.com and they can fill up the page or I can even send you uh, my email address. People can contact me. So it's not difficult to find me. <laughs> That's wonderful. And are you on any social media platform that they can follow Yes, I on? am. I am. I have YouTube, Strong and Shine. I have Instagram, Strong and Shine. On Facebook, I have a group called Strong and Shine as well. So everywhere. <laughs> oh, love that. And I love how globalized we are that, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you can still get into touch Connect. with like how we are connecting, we're right? connecting. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And I just love that because every part of this world has amazing humans. And I love that we're able to connect with them now more so than ever before and shine a light of, you know, entrepreneurship and then get tips and all that good stuff. So thank you so much. Now, before we leave and before we say bye, I do want to know what is your favorite book, whether it's professional or whether it's fun. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, you have a whole so, list. <laughs> yeah, so many, so many. So, you know, one of my goals for 2021 is to read one book a month. 
Mm -hmm. And so talking about hacking, I love hacking stuff. So one of the things I do is every morning I go for a very long walk. I go for at least an hour or an hour and a half or two hours walk um, in nature because I just love nature. And I thought, how do I fit in like one book a month? And realized, ah, I can just do Audible, right? I can listen to eBooks or even YouTube has so many mm -hmm. eBooks. So now I'm able to do eight books a month instead of one book a month wow. because when I walk, I can listen to them. Wow. And again, when you know, we say, oh, I'm the type I prefer reading versus listening. Not true. We just haven't practiced it. Mm -hmm. So I used to be the type who liked reading as well, but now I'm good with listening because I trained myself to do it. So it's just mm -hmm. about training. So back to your question about what is my favorite book. I have so many. I wouldn't even know which one to recommend, but I love The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Really, it's such a, an inspiring book and that really got me very motivated to start my mornings early. And I love Think and Grow Rich, of course, Napoleon Hill. I love Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. I'm now listening to Atomic Habits as well. I forgot the name of the author, but yeah, there's so many books. And mm. if people want light reading, I really love uh, Paolo Coelho, um, his book Alchemist. I, I, that was yeah. one, the first book, first book that got me into spirituality. Yeah, I think Alchemist is one of the all-time favorites for many. Yes, for yes. many. So I yes. love the list. I have a my one of my really good friends and I. We have this ongoing list of books to read, and Fantastic. then we keep sharing books. And it just I just love I love books, and then I love collecting them. And then I'll do you read them? Do you read like do you need physical copy to read them, or do you listen to them? No, I do all. I do all also. So good. you know, there was a time in my life where I just stopped reading altogether. I just had my kids and I just forgot what reading was. And it was actually terrible that that even happened. <laughs> and so then um, a little after my son, my son was born, I bought the Kindle. I'm like, you know what? I just need to get a yes. Kindle then. Like if I can't read at yeah. night because it's, there's no light, I should get a Kindle. So then I bought a Kindle and it was life changing. Amazing. Life -changing. I have a Kindle, but I hardly use it. <laughs> well, I mean, I read like, I don't know how many books within a month, I read like wow. so four to six books because I was just wow. so hung I was so hungry for books and I didn't Amazing. realize it. And then, um, but now of course, Kindle, you have, there's an app now. And then of course there's audio books. There's like everything. Yes. There's zero excuse yes. to not be able to read a book. <laughs> and so That's true. That is true. And you can he listen as well now. So you can do it while you drive. Yeah. You can do so many things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always prefer the real thing in my hand. I love holding it. Yeah. But then again, I'm not going to not do it just because I can't hold it. I'm not going to deny myself an experience because I only want it in a certain way. And, you know, I feel like I can't do that. So I do do whatever I need to do in order to listen or hear or read. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I love books. I just love books. And yeah, so me too, me too. what are some apps or tools like business tools that you would suggest or some of your favorite ones? Trello, I would say is fantastic. Because Trello boards really keeps everything organized. I love right. Trello as well. <laughs> Loom, Loom is very is good when you I have to Loom. record stuff. <laughs> Zoom, of course, Zoom. <laughs> we, we need this, you know. Wow, there's so many. Yeah. Well, those but, are the top three, I would say. Yeah. yeah, I use all of them and I love all of them also. And it's just it's yes. incredible. All the things that we have done, especially during 2020, and we've realized, wow, this is manageable. Wow. This exactly. Can be done too. So, exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, it's been so wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. you. Have, thank you. You have shared so much wisdom, and I've gotten chills so many times during this conversation today wow. that I'm so grateful for you to be here today with us. So, thank you so much. Likewise, it's been such a great conversation, and I really, my motive always is I hope people listening to this will, one way or the other, be positively impacted and remember that there is always, 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 always hope, no matter what, yeah. no matter what you're going through, there is always hope. Yes. Completely so never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Incredible. So powerful. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you. It was <laughs> such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining Law Chat with Gerja. I love these kind of stories and conversations where we can be real, honest, and open and having fun at the same time. 
I hope you are inspired and motivated to keep doing the amazing work you are doing. If this is something that gave you all those feels and then some, truly motivated and inspired for you. You can show your love in all or one of these ways. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video with your community and tell them about it or share with somebody that can benefit from it. I look forward to seeing you next time on another episode of Law Chat. And until then, keep moving forward. Bye. Mm -hmm.